Hi, I'm Jennifer of Celtic Knot Crochet, and today in this video I'll be showing you how to make the Velvet Pumpkin. This is a fun, quick fall project using the beautiful velvet yarns that are readily available in your local craft store. For this project, I'll be using one skein of Yarn Bees Velvety Smooth in the color Pumpkin. I saw this in Hobby Lobby and I just loved this color. I have several patterns using the velvet yarn. You can see a link to them in the description below and I think you'll enjoy working with this. I also used a size K or 6.5 millimeter hook. You'll also need a tapestry needle and some polyfill stuffing. To begin this project, I will put my slip knot on my hook and I'm going to chain 16 chains. Some people say that it's hard to see your stitches with the velvet yarn and it can take some getting used to, but I think you can see each chain here and we're going to start working into them. I skip the first chain and then I'm going to work a single crochet in the second chain and in each chain all the way across until I get to the last two chains. Remember, single crochet is I put my hook in yarn over, pull through the chain, then yarn over, pull through two. And I continue that to the last two chains. Because this yarn is so thick, the project goes nice and fast and it feels so soft in your fingers. Love the velvet yarn. One more to go. You can see here, two left, and then I'm going to work a slip stitch in the last two. So a slip stitch is put my hook in, yarn over, pull through the chain or the stitch, and through the loop on my hook. And one more slip stitch, hook in, yarn over, pull through chain, and through loop on hook. Here's that first row. Now I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and I'm going to work a slip stitch in each of those slip stitches I already made. So I find one of the loops there, yarn over, pull through everything, insert my hook into the next loop, you can see it right here, of that second slip stitch, yarn over, pull through. Now I'm going to work the bulk of the textured stitch for this project. It's called a mini bean stitch. You're going to yarn over, put your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and make sure it's about a half an inch long. Then I'll do that again. Yarn over, put my hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop about the same height. Now I have five loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through all five. And that's it. I'm going to do that in each stitch now all the way across. So yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop about half an inch long, yarn over, hook in, yarn over, another loop half inch long, five loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all five. And I'm not going to add in a chain one in between, I'm just going to continue that all the way across. You can see what kind of nice texture that creates. And with the different fibers of this velvet yarn, it even adds more depth and texture to a textured stitch. I'll do one more to show you. Yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop, half an inch. Yarn over, hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through all five. 
Now sometimes it can get tricky having that many loops on your hook, so I'll show you a little tip for that. After I yarn over, I take my thumb and I hold that yarn over in place so that I can insert my hook and do another yarn over and draw up a loop. Then I release that loop with my thumb and I yarn over again and this time I hold that yarn over and all the other stitches underneath. All those other loops, I hold them in place with my thumb so that I can insert my hook again, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now I have five and then I can yarn over, pull through all five. By holding the loops on my hook like that, it gives me more control and I'm not having as much problem maneuvering all those loops on my hook. Here is row two completed with all of those mini bean stitches. They're like mini puff stitches and they give a lot of great texture to the finished project. Next I'm going to chain one, turn my work. Here's that chain one that I just made. So I don't want to work in that, I'm going to skip it and I'm going to work in these first two mini bean stitches and do a slip stitch in each. So put my hook in, yarn over, pull through everything, hook in, yarn over, pull through everything. And now I'm going to work a single crochet in each of the mini bean stitches to the last two. So I should have 11 single crochets on every other row. And it might be good to check those every once in a while as you're working to make sure that you don't drop any stitches. Here I can see my last two stitches, but let's double check that I've done 11 single crochets. So I have the two slip stitches at the beginning, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven single crochets. And then the last two stitches, I'll do two more slip stitches again. One, two. And I'm going to repeat this for several rows. So the next repeat is chain one, turn my work, slip stitch in the first two stitches and then do the mini bean stitch all the way across so this here is row two that I'm repeating and I'll just continue to repeat row two with the mini beans and then row three with the single crochet. Each of them begin with two slip stitches and the single crochet row ends with two slip stitches. Very simple pattern. And those slip stitches at the ends of each row help make the nice pumpkin shape. One little tip that you might want to do is you might want to put a stitch marker on the end of your project that has all those slip stitches at the beginning. You'll notice that one end of the project has mostly slip stitches here and the other end has slip stitch and then the mini bean, slip stitch mini bean. So this will be the bottom of the pumpkin it will be like so and the one with all the slip stitches will be the top of the pumpkin. So if you put the stitch marker here it'll help you remember at the end how to assemble and stuff the pumpkin. Once you've completed 17 rows of the mini bean stitch and you have the repeat, the last repeat, row three right here. You'll have a fabric that looks something like this and you'll want to do one more of the mini bean stitch row. So you'll want to repeat 
row two one more time. So I chained one, slip stitch in the first two stitches, and then do the mini beans all the way across. And then you're going to finish off with a nice long tail so you can use it to sew together the pumpkin. This is what your crocheted piece would look like after you've completed all of the repeats so that you have 18 of the mini bean rows. Here's my stitch marker reminding me which side is the top of the pumpkin. It's the side where I did all the slip stitches on top of each other. And I ended on the opposite side that's going to be the bottom of the pumpkin. So I left a long yarn tail threaded it on my jumbo tapestry needle and I'm going to work through this side working a running stitch. I insert the needle up and down through the bottom edge of each row. Pull it through, pull it tight, and this is going to cinch up this bottom section of the pumpkin to close it up. I continue that all the way across I do about four or five at a time and pull it up. I think you'll love working with this velvet yarn. It's so soft, it comes in such pretty colors. And because it's thick, it works up fast, but I find that it does not hurt my hands to work with. Blanket yarns can be very difficult to work with and you need to give your hands several breaks, but I find this velvet yarn, you don't need that. But you get the benefit of a thicker yarn. So I've cinched this up as tight as I can make it. And right here where the two ends of the last rows on either side meet up, going to put the needle through again and this is called a whip stitch going over the edge like so and there is still a little hole here so now I'm going to go across with my needle across the opening and pull it tight and then I'll go across the other way and pull it tight and do that again going across that opening again the yarn doesn't matter that I'm stitching on the outside this will be on the bottom of the pumpkin and you you can't see the stitching anyway so that looks pretty nice and secure at the bottom now I'm going to sew up the sides I can use my stitch marker to join those ends so I stay even as I sew up the side and I'm going to use that whip stitch again put my needle through both thick thicknesses and wrap the yarn over needle through both thicknesses wrap the yarn over I continue like that all the way up nice and snug Again, you can't see this normally with different yarn I would do this on the inside and you can too if you would like but I found works just as well like this and you cannot see the stitching and my pumpkin is coming together so by doing those shorter stitches on the top it helps it to curve in and gathering it up on the bottom gives us some nice depth down there now I'm going to stuff it to stuff our pumpkin we'll just use some polyester fiber fill 
can find this at your local craft store or in the link in the description below. And I press down in the center and pull out towards the sides. So I really get the fullness of the pumpkin shape. And then I still have some room here in the middle. So I'll add a little bit more in there. And now I want to continue around this top edge just like I did around the bottom. Weaving the needle up and down through the ends of the row. It's a running stitch. Pulling it taut every three to four stitches or passes I should say. See how that brought everything together? And I'll do the same as before. Work across the top and across the other direction. Tighten it up nicely. Do one more stitch down inside and put my needle through the loop to create a nice knot and hide the end. And here I have my pumpkin base. You can see how these mini bean stitches creates this fun texture. Now we can do something else to create a more pumpkin-y shape um, and that is by adding some stitching down through the center and that gives it that nice dimple in the center. You'll want to take a long piece of the yarn thread it on your yarn needle and you'll want to have it nice and double. And I start here at the bottom of the pumpkin and I'm going to tie a nice overhand knot anchoring this double thread, double yarn. Now that that's anchored, I have some tension and I'm going to put the needle all the way through and out the top, like so. And I'm going to pull down hard to create that dimpled look. So I pull down hard, keep pressing the center down feed the needle through and then put the needle through that loop that I just created on top and now I have that nice knot on the top and the bottom and it pulls the top down in and I can do that one more time. I can go back down through the center, come out the bottom Pull it tight and then go back up to the top again. I used a double thickness of the yarn because when you pull on this velvet yarn really hard or there's a lot of tension on it, it sometimes snaps or breaks. So I wanted to make sure that it didn't break and that it held my project in that nice pumpkin shape. 
and then I would do the same as I did before. Create another loop by working through the top of the pumpkin. Put the loop, the needle through the loop to knot it, and then I can weave this end of the yarn through. And there I have my pumpkin shape with lots of great texture from these mini bean stitches. Here is my piece for the stem. I chained five and single crocheted across, so I have four single crochets, and I went back and forth just for five rows. I'm going to fold that in half the long way, and using my yarn needle, sew up the side again with the whip stitch. And I will simply sew that to the middle of the pumpkin. Doing the same manner as before, catching a few loops here on the pumpkin center, and then feeding my needle through the stem. And I'll do that all the way around. Making sure it's nice and secure, and by sewing it on tightly, it helps it to stand up straight. This yarn has a lot of natural body to it, which is great for projects like this. And I can come out here. This the other yarn tail, I can tie it in a nice knot with. And there you have the Velvet Pumpkin. And if you'd like to make one that's just slightly smaller, you can find the directions for that at CelticKnotCrochet.com. It's made the same exact way. You would just chain 10 at the beginning instead of 16, and you make all the small mini bean stitches and all the slip stitches in the same way and then you can attach the stem to the center. You might also want to instead attach a little curly cue, and the directions for that are also at CelticKnotCrochet.com. So I hope you enjoyed making this project. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to give us a thumbs up or click to subscribe, and make sure to watch the next video. Happy crocheting!